or when you are running a very busy landscape design practice and you're using CAD as a means of producing your design work to give to clients, it's important that your workflow is organised. And one of the early things to develop, I think, is to use layers extensively. Here's an example of a, a site survey. And if I pick a line here, it's on a layer called L-survey. And this particular dimension that's here is just on layer zero. Um, but if we take a look at the layers in here, you can see they, the, the layers all start with an L dash. And the reason for that is that if we see a layer called L dash, we know it's to do with our landscape job. Quite often you will be able to get a base plan, often done by a survey firm, and hopefully they name their layers in an organised way like this. But if we, if we now turn on a layer called Hardscape, this is a layer in this particular practice that says what are the changes we need to make for the new design. We're going to put a new path around there. The lawn is going to go in here. Changes to the driveway will be made and some uh, screening will go in. So that's all gathered on one layer. Now, we're going to remove perhaps a pergola in here. And that's, if we click on this line here, notice that it's on a layer called L-Demolish. So we've got to get rid of that old driveway. So that's on its own layer. So we can simply turn it off. And there's the beginning of what we're going, what the construction team is going to set out. And... Well, let's have a look at the intended planting and we can do that by simply turning on a plant symbol layer and now we can see the intention for developing the site up. All of the symbols that you see here have been carefully designed uh, the GCAD plus way and the inside parts if you like of the symbol are all on layer L plant symbol. Let's just pick one for the moment. Let's take this one and we'll edit it. And if I pick on any of these, notice it's on a layer L plant symbol, as is the red blotch there. So that's how we can turn on the layer. The symbols themselves can be inserted and should just be inserted on layer zero. And you would normally leave layer zero as the current layer. And put a little tick alongside it, see it's, it is the current layer. So you just drag in the symbols from the symbol library, place them in there, but should you need to turn them off, you just go to the layer stack. We can have other things, separate, other elements, if you like, separated in that way. We can turn on all the dimensioning that the construction team is going to need to uh, build the, the site dimensions out here. And we can turn on text. We'll turn off the mentioning and turn on text in the one go. And now the leader options been used to put the text in. What else have we got on an individual layer? We have a construction layer which we can turn on and turn off and that will work nicely for the construction team will just be circles and blobs done so i hope you get the drift that my drift rather that it's very handy to separate elements in your design by layer and be very consistent with the naming conventions once you get once that falls into place. You just naturally work that way. And that enables you to handle very complex designs. Let's have a look at another GCAD Plus user who's developed this particular design. And you can see how relatively complex it is. It's the development of a, of a reserve, number of tennis courts, play areas, barbecue areas, and so on. And we can 
create layout sheets is the demolition information and construction information and landscape details and finally the planting so you can see that they're quite complex but if we and if we go into the layers group you can see lots of layer names and there is a technique to group them all together and I would hasten to add you don't have to slavishly follow what I'm recommending here as long as you get a consistent workflow system that will enable you to increase productivity in your group and bring other designers in under your umbrella who will work the same way